So I got this already recording, and that's how we're going to start out, because that's just how it went. So as we were starting this, Zach was asking me where I'm at, and I'm in sunny Arizona, which right now it's kind of a windy day, but we had talked about, you know, running a C++ conference down here one time, you know, sometime in the middle of February when nobody wants to be anywhere else but probably sunny Arizona, right? So, so welcome, everyone. I'm Kevin. Volunteering this time for C plus plus now. That's that's what we're here to here to talk about. And I'm with Zach, uh, Zach Lane, and Zach's been part of Boost for a long time. Have you not? Yeah, so I've been um, like following the Boost list. I think since about six months after I started working professionally. So that's been about twenty years now. And then I've been you know wow. off and on active on the list uh, for most of that time. And then you know I have three Boost libraries that I've written. Uh, so the last like you know. I, six or seven years I've been much more active. So, okay. I got all kinds of questions, but I got to ask this, like, how is it different to you writing C plus plus libraries versus writing C plus plus applications? Cause I, you know, honestly, my wheelhouse, although I will do like a restful APIs, you know, which mm -hmm. is kind of a, you know, remote access library, we'll say, you know, but it's just not the same to me as like the performance and the, so how is that to you writing libraries? Well, so I, that's an interesting question because I actually gave a talk about the CPB con, I think the second one, and it was all about just like writing libraries. And um, for that particular talk, I took a bunch of sort of interesting things I picked up over the years from various conferences, mostly C++ now. But I think the the, the concrete difference to me is that, so, so the example I gave was like, okay, let's say you've got a UI and you've got a button, you click the button. And, and I asked people in the audience, how long do you have to do whatever that button does before people notice? And someone says 100 milliseconds. I was like, that's right. Like there's a lot of research that says it's about 100 right. milliseconds, right? Yeah. And then I said, okay, now you've got a function that you've associated with the button. You know, you got about 100 milliseconds because it's, it's associated with that button. Now you got this different function and it does something. And I said, how long do you have to do that before anybody notices? And there's no answer to that, right? And so that's the difference right. between writing an application in a library is with an application, you have this specific context and you know what your sort of time and space budget is and you know the parameters and you know... Um, maybe it doesn't need to have the nicest interface because just quick and dirty, you need to get it done by Thursday, mm -hmm. right? And then you've got library <laughs> yeah. code, right? And then you've got library code, which is like, ooh, if I name that that right now, is it going to really haunt me for the next 10 years, <laughs> right? And so, so the more used your library is and the more general purpose it is, the more you have to think about these kind of things. And so that means like thinking about performance like all the time mm -hmm. because you can't, uh, predict in what context someone's going to use it performance wise. That also right. means like all those other usability concerns. And so it's, it's really an interesting problem. And I, I, um, for whatever reason, I think maybe because I was so influenced by boost so early in my career, I became really interested in like writing good libraries. And so it's been something I've like thought about a lot and, and did a lot of effort towards. And so, yeah, that's, that's kind of my wheelhouse is like writing libraries. That's what I enjoy. That's cool. And I think it's actually called, uh, you know, uh, writing great libraries and 89 easy steps <laughs> right. was that talk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and the 89 easy steps, I think kind of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. alludes to the, 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 how easy it is to write libraries, right? Yeah. It's not. Right? <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. And that, as, as an aside, like that was a, that was a really fun title when I thought of it. And, and when people hear about it later on, it's great. But like on the day of people had heard the talk so many times it like, Everybody's like, where are the 89 steps? I'm like, no, no, it was just kind of a gag. But like when you hear about the gag for so long, it kind of wears out. And so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't, don't make yeah, talking titles for your slides is the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the takeaway. Yeah. Being restful with billions of dollars. I wonder if that'll come back on me. So, <laughs> so I was kind of laughing because I don't know if it was yours, but I think you were at the first CPP con, right? Because I think I actually found a trip report where, you know, it was like 2014, um, unlike Dev Central. But one of the things I thought was interesting as I was reading through it, you know, CPPCon when it started, um, there, you know, you had at the bottom, if it was yours, I can't necessarily, but it was somebody had stated, I'll put it that way, that, you know, CPPCon when it first started was definitely, you needed to know C++ before you came. And so... The reason I point that out was because, you know, John, you know, John Cobb, who helped run C++ now uh, before Bob did, you know, he and I can see that. But I think it's interesting how now, you know, CPPCon has changed. We definitely they have back to basic tracks and things like that. Yeah. But it does seem like 
there there still is that academic that real deep piece to C++ now that really sets it apart that I mean I mean even in the conference we mic the audience because we want to capture the discussion as talks are yeah. going on you know yeah. so do you have any like is there any thoughts that you can add to that about what you love because I mean you've been going to C++ now for a while as well I mean I know you talk at a lot of conferences but um, what yeah, is your yeah. takeaway about that yeah, so I started going from the first year. And again, it was because it was originally BoostCon. It was announced on the Boost list that this thing was happening. Yeah. I was like, well, I definitely want to like try to go to that. And at the time, I worked at a research lab. So it was very easy to go to conferences, right? It's kind of mm-hmm. like, oh, hey, yeah. can I go to this conference? I'm like, yeah, go. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> like the first few years, I, I went and, and it was all on the lab's dime. And that was great. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the, the first time I went, I remember having this discussion with uh, uh, Joel de Guzman, the, the author of uh, Spirit and Spirit Two. Um, oh, okay. And and I remember saying to him like, it was it was it was at the the you know there's a picnic every year for those who don't know there's like a like right. a social gathering thing and and it used to be on like I think the second to last night uh, with the first few years it was always at the end, and um, I remember he said like so how do you like the conference and I said well, I think this is the first place I've ever gone where everybody like in a professional context where everybody knows what I'm talking about. And that right. was the feeling of it is like, it was this meeting of the minds of all these people that were like into the same kind of advanced, crazy C++ stuff that I'm into. And that has been a self-fulfilling thing. Like it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a remote place. It's hard to get to. It doesn't have, it's not a big yep. venue. And so if you aren't one of the hardcore people, you don't, really go out of your way to go to such a hard to get to conference. But if you are, it's very sticky. Like most people that go, they end up coming back, you know? Yeah. And um, so I, I will say like the, the first time uh, that I went, there was this one moment that I was like, I'm never going to miss this conference. And that moment was like um, at, at lunchtime one day, um, you know, people uh, like walk downtown or they go to the the resort that's nearby where most people have rooms. Uh, so I went over to the resort, was just getting lunch in this little down downstairs uh, uh, dining area. And um, I just sat down at a table with other conference attendees. And so I ended up sitting at a table with, um, uh, let's see, like Doug Greger, um, Howard Hennant, um, Dave Abrahams, Sean Parent, and I think I'm, I think I'm missing one or two other, like sort of like right. at the time, these were some of the biggest names yes. in C++ by far and including uh, like two of the the founders of Boost. And um, they were having an argument. This is before C++ 11. They have an argument about like the right uh, way to do like move semantics, where the move should like always be guaranteed to happen exactly when a copy would happen so that, you know, that the lifetime is the same as if it's an optimization of a copy or whether it's okay to defer it because the whole point is performance. And it was a really fascinating conversation. I'm like, I have nothing to contribute to this. At the time, I think I've been programming professionally for about three years and I'm just like eating my food. Like this is amazing. <laughs> and and uh, so there's moments like that. And I always tell people like, I think this is a, a more well-known thing about conferences. At least I hear people say it more than I did when I first started going to conferences, which is that, you often get the most value out of the conference in the sort of hallway and interstitial right. moments of the conference, right? In the evening after the thing is over in a break time, you just stumble into a conversation or you bring something up and someone has to know, happens to know the, the answer to this question has been kind of rattling around your brain for a while that no one seems to know the answer to. I've had lots of moments like that at the conference. And I think those are, those are really fantastic. So it's, it's funny because you know, I made a comment on like LinkedIn last year about C++ now, because it literally to me, it's like, you know, uh, C++ code camp, just like you said, because of where it's at in Aspen. It's like, you know, going yeah. to camp and coding C++. Well, but, you know, it's, it's so, funny you say that, not to interrupt you, but like there's a guy that used to come to yeah. the conference all the time uh, named Troy. And Troy said, these are my summer camp friends. These are the people I see yes. for a week, a year, and I never see them again, but they have this really intense thing for one week. Yeah. Yeah. And so just so that we don't turn anyone off, like to your point, when you first came, you were talking three years into coding, but that part where everybody is that welcoming, you can come up and sit at a table, you know, conversations with Sean or, or, you know, Phil Nash. And um, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. Now I have Mm -hmm. to say the lunch part, I'm kind of excited about because, you know, we deliver lunches every year. So kind of promoting the conference a bit here, but you can have lunch delivered now. And it's not C++, but I decided to take on a project. There's a new lunch delivery order system, which is in Python. Oh, really? 
that was oh, kind of cool. scary. <laughs> that'll go. That'll go up next week. Uh, next week Monday. So that should be the eighth, ninth. It'll go up on the ninth. Um, so if you are looking to do the lunch orders, that'll end up being up. Um, and the picnic. It's kind of funny you say that they always did it at the end because now it's like we just pick the day that the weather looks like it's going to be best. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because <laughs> there's been years of snow, and we're earlier this year. My my wife would love some snow. We're hoping not. But, you know, so it's funny you were talking about spirit and spirit, uh, spirit two and spirit X three, because that's actually what your talks about this year, isn't it? I mean, yeah, not those yeah. specifically, but the library you wrote on uh, to go above that. Right. Exactly. So so um, I have this library called Boost Parser. It just got accepted. It's not in a boost distribution yet, but hopefully the next one, a uh, next release will have it in it. And uh, the idea was that, like, you know, I've been using spirits in spirit X one and that's like close to 20 years now at this point, it's like a, mm -hmm. a long time ago. Oh, and wow. Spirit 2 was a, a big improvement over that. I've been using that for a long time. And then X3 is this sort of, it's got X in the name. It's an experimental version. It's not an official release of Spirit. Okay. Okay. So gotcha. all these things are around and I've used them all. And like Spirits 1 and 2 are written in uh, the C++ 98 standard. And X3, yep. like I said, is this kind of experimental thing. And so it's not fully fleshed out. It's not fully documented. And, and it's, it's kind of hard to learn about and, and hard to get your hands on. Um, and so I wanted to make something that was like a modern version of that. And at the beginning, it was just like, I said, well, I love all the stuff they're doing in X3, but there's this one thing I don't like about it that makes it, it ruins it for me and I can't use it. And so mm -hmm. I was like, that's really frustrating. So I'm like, well, I'm gonna use those same techniques. I'm gonna use all the same like operator overloads for this little domain specific embedded language. And I'm just going to write a little thing that I can use for this parsing thing I'm doing. So gotcha. I'm writing this little library to do what I want to do. And um, the whole thing was like about a week of evenings. It wasn't like super complicated because a lot of the, the sort of hardcore engineering aspects of, of spirit was like, you didn't have generalized return type deduction. Like you have at C plus 14. Okay. So you couldn't just say like, do some stuff and whatever that is. Oh. And right. now you can just put auto there, like literally yeah. two thirds of the work goes away. And so it's like so much easier with a modern C++. So that was really fun. And then I was like, you know, maybe I can, you know, extend some more of it and like make, make it more robust and like think through some of these problems that are kind of niggling details that I have with it. And so I ended up making it a full-fledged library. And then I ran it by the, the people that were the maintainers of the spirit libraries. And I was like, you know, is there any heartburn over my, you know, proposing like a replacement for a library? And they, they gave me their blessing. And so then I, I proposed it and, nice. and now it's uh, accepted. Yeah. So that's what the talk is about. It's like, um, it, it's both like a book report about what's in the library, but it's also about like um, sort of uh, takeaways of having written the library and stuff like that. And to that end, you know, I will say like yours is one of the few talks that's actually two sessions long. It's the only one from what I understand this year. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was gonna say Correct. I know there were two that were there were two that were proposed and and so you know C now, um when I compare to like uh you know CppCon, I know that there's other places, but all of C now's talks, generally speaking, are ninety minutes. So yeah. you're gonna get a nice three hours of education on using <laughs> yeah. the library from someone yeah. with years of experience. And yeah. so that's that's awesome. So yeah. C++ now, starting on Sunday the 28th, we'll do our open registration. Um, if you came to C++ now before, know that this year the airport stays open all year, or at least all conference. Um, you, there will be no bus back. You can actually fly out on Friday. Um, <laughs> yeah, all the yeah. fun things that we get to do, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The airport's only open about, I feel like three quarters of the time it's open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's actually kind of funny because in Aspen, the amount of things that close right when it comes to this part yeah. of the season, it's like I call restaurants. Are you going to be open this week? Because we want to give you some business. <laughs> yeah. OK, we'll be open. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's funny you say that because like I always tell people that. Yeah, well, so first of all, when you tell someone you're going to a conference in Aspen, they're like, okay. In fact, my my lab director, when I first started going, he was like, I've been to the Aspen Center for Physics where we have it because he was a physicist. Yeah, right? yeah. So he was like, okay, oh, yeah. yeah, you're just going to go ride bikes and go to like an hour's worth of lectures. I know how it works. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, it's a really a thing. It's like we're, we're, yeah. we're there for the for the conference. And um, But the the fact that it's shut down is the reason we're able to have it there because the off season is much yes. cheaper. But the, the aspect of it that I don't think was the intention, but the, the nice side effect that everybody really um, uh, seems to value a lot is that the fact that everything's shut down means there's nothing to do but C++. So if you, if you want to have right. like 
uh, an experience where you like go to New York and go to lots of stuff, like go to a different conference. If you want to just do C++ for a week, this is your jam, right? It's, it's a really great yes. conference for that. Yeah, it is. And, and I think that, you know, being the smaller conference, everyone's tight knit, you know, everything's nice and close by the altitude and the clean air probably adds to it as well. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The only place you can get water from the tap, I think, in the United States and actually call it mountain spring water because it's not filtered. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, listen, Zach, I appreciate you giving me time today. I look forward to seeing your talk at the conference and I look forward to seeing you at the conference. Anything else you wish to add before we go? No, no, this is great. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So if you haven't got your tickets yet, by all means, hop over to cppnow.org, grab your tickets, and we'll see you, we'll see you in Aspen. Thanks, Zach.